Hey y'all, so I'm back and happy Saturday and all that good stuff. Isn't it cool that our book, our altar book is done. I'm over here doing a happy dance. I'm like so enjoying that book. I flip through it periodically when I'm here in the studio working. I just want a little inspiration. I start flipping through it and just looking at little bits and pieces that I'm adding to it. Just little things here and there. But um, it's nice to know that you guys like the idea of the book project, the limited. I'm going to do a limited edition project and uh, <clears throat> I'll probably do some kind of numbered series and then each book will be numbered and um, and that'll be it. I won't make any more of them just so that way it's a nice way to make it special for everyone and yet we all can have access to it. So um, if you're interested keep the keep the interest coming and I'm making a list right now of everybody who's already said they wanted to and then at some point I'll when I get to that place I'll you know <clears throat> reach out again. But anyway, so today we're going to do a two-part book. This is a really interesting um, book. It's going to be a concertina style. It's going to be pretty large, um, but it's going to fold down into something that's really a cool um, sized book that can be great as a travel log. Um, I like making sort of simplistic travel books to take with me and I try to make them for each journey versus like a really large one that you just constantly add into it every time you go somewhere. Those are not as effective for me but also this style is great if you just want to do a one-off artist book. If you have your jelly prints or other kinds of images that you want to put into like an art as book type of structure not so much a journey not so much a um you don't want it to be a junk journal you're not looking for it to be kind of a journal you want it to be like an art inspiration type of book this is a nice structure for that so for that I'm going to use um, this month's printables and I've already cut all the white edges off of them so I got that out the way so you're not spending time watching me tear it because that took a little while so this week what we're going to do is we're going to glue everything on both sides and actually create the folded structure and then next week we're going to put the covers on and um, the the closure and it's one other thing hmm, can't remember right now but we're going to finish it off I'm probably going to use like a cloth for my cover and it's probably going to be something like this I've been playing with this for a different book structure that I'm working on over in Patreon but I like this sort of um, fabric that I have. I love this fabric. I have a bolt of it. And so I then um, printed on it using my stencils. My new stencils are out but I'm but they're not ready for sale. I'm just finishing um, just working with them to see if I want anything else done but I used the stencil to print on here and so I think I'm gonna use something like this as the cover for this journal so yeah it's gonna be really cool it's gonna be the kind of thing that you can put out on your coffee table you know put it around somewhere where you can enjoy it it could be an inspiration for others or it could be a cool gift that you may want to give someone of your art I like things like that so I'm gonna use as a foundation just this large sheet of drawing paper that really I use on my desk I use it for coffee staining as you see uh, for spray painting <laughs> Yeah, and so I keep all of these because I use them as a foundation to cover over. Sometimes the staining I will use and collage back in other things, but I think this time we're just going to cover this whole piece with these images. So I'm going to just do kind of like what I, well, first of all, what I did is I went through and I picked some of the tones that were pretty close and I did have a couple of high tones like with these rusts and these but I mostly kept it the cooler tones that were in this week's package uh, this month I'm sorry September's printables because oh that's what I was gonna do next week we're gonna do a little of my um, ink printing on top so it looks something, where is it? Because I have some over here for another project I'm working on. But we're going to do something like this on top of it when we're done. Just to add another bit to the pattern. Um, 
So yeah, so we'll do a little bit of printing next week and then the covers. That's what it was. I knew it was two th main things we were going to do because covers won't take that long. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to kind of random collage. I pulled out these because they're going to be kind of like the focal ones that probably will get kind of put on the top, but I want to come back to these because I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to put them on once I actually get the pages, once we actually get the pages figured out. So let's get going here. Move these out the way. Keep what we're going to be working with. Now, this is approximately this piece of paper. It's just a random tear, but it's approximately um, 23 by 3 by 18 23 by 18 so even those larger sheets that you can get like at the art supply store you know blick places like that will have um even um blick has them but there's a number of stores that you know you go in and you'll see a lot of the the asian style papers kind of hanging over um like a wooden dowel and they're about this size. You can go in to the art supply stores and sometimes just the white papers or sometimes they have the color papers and stuff that are sort of like this size. So you can basically find this size a lot of different places. Or you can take two, let's say, I guess like, uh, what is that? Is it an 11, 11 by 17? If you even have pads that are that size, or it doesn't have to be this tall, you can have like an 11 by 14, and you can take them, put them side to side by side, and then you can tape them down the middle using like a washi tape, because we're going to be gluing over, so it doesn't matter, but some kind of washi tape on both sides to put them together. You can do it like that, so you can get creative. Um, yeah, so something approximately this size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start figuring out where I want to put these. I kind of want, um, let me just lay them out. Because I think what I'm going to do is kind of, I just love these walls. Um, I'm kind of do something along this line and then I'm going to cross Okay, because I have enough of them. I just kind of want to get it mostly down. And originally I was going to figure out which of these sections I don't need. So let me just see. Let me see. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> kind of create a random grid here. And then we'll worry about This is going to be where the fold is. Kind of want to get it pretty good top to bottom and then, so maybe I'll do it like this. Yeah, I'll do some this way, some that way, because I want this to be left anyway. Okay, so let's just get the glue in. I'm just kind of getting the idea of my random placement and then... I'm going to basically sort of rip these in half. I don't want super small sections for collaging, but I don't want super big either. So, so now that we kind of have a general idea of what we're doing, okay, there. So let's just get going here. We're just going to get the glue in. So I'm using my Giotto because I know that, and we have two sides to do, so I think I'll use the cooler ones on one side and then the ones that are a little warmer on 
the other side. Can you guys see I'm all in frame? Yeah. Okay. You know, I like to get a good amount of glue. So, what did I say I was going to do? I think I said I was going to have this one sort of going this way. Just get it right up to the end there. Let me get a credit card. So, yeah, I just kind of sit around and dream up. Um, <laughs> book structures and ways to work with them. That's my thing. That and jelly printing, if I had to say my tooth well and paper making, my three things that I really just can do all the time. So I am going to mix these up, you know, I wasn't going to keep them. So, yeah, if I had to say those three are my favorite things to do. I could do them all the time, no matter what, in the studio. So... So I kind of just can sit around and dream up projects quite easily. Make sure I'm taping, everything is good. Yep. Okay. So let's get this. Because I'm cool with this paper underneath here, I don't mind like the little sections that are going to be there because I'll just leave them like that and then I can come back and work over them and decide you know if I want to leave them get rid of them that's cool so yeah you don't have to worry about those we're just going to kind of overlap and get our basic sections down I'm just gonna see something if I do it that's kind of cool putting this the straight edges together like that I'll try that just kind of mix up the look Okay, so like that. Oh, these patterns are just yum. I'm telling you, I like my old walls. Really am loving. How these patterns are going together. Yeah, that's my big thing. When I travel, I'm always taking pictures of decaying walls and doorways. <laughs> Love them. I'm going to switch it around so that if I have to fill this place in down here. Oh, you can't see it. I'm a little off. If I have to fill this place in down here. Um, is this zoomed out? Let me make sure. I've been doing so much. Okay. Okay. Um, that it won't be, it won't be even. It won't be like this straight line going across of, you know, of a, of a, um, a pieced in section. See, this is looking great already. I love it. mix these up. I want to make sure I do a good job of mixing them up. So if I do that one like that, that'll kind of leave that. Okay. So I'll show you. We're going to get this much done on this side and then I'm going to go to the other side and we're going to do the same thing 
And then we're going to put it into a book structure and then we're going to finish off these edges. That's basically the process that we're going to be engaging ourselves in. I'm going to leave a little bit more of that space. I'm liking that space there. So wherever that shows up, I'm just going to play with it and see what happens. I may even leave it because it's kind of like giving that sort of feeling of um, the wall thing, you know. I like that. Okay, so now this one I was thinking about. I really got that crooked, so I'm going to just do it this way. Like that. I think, do I want to use that one? Or do I want to use, I want to use this one. Yeah. Now I'm also wanting to make sure that I'm <clears throat> mixing this pattern up good. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this at the top and this at the bottom for right now. I'm going to be covering stuff over, but let's let's just go to this other side and let me get these I didn't mean to tear it so that white show look I'll deal with that later. So we're going to do the same thing, but we want to make sure that we get it on, I know this page is a pretty big for my desk and the camera, but I think we're doing okay. So I want to make sure we get it on the same side as here, because we're going to leave this free edge untouched right now, and you will see why very shortly. There, so let's go ahead and get these down. This is really pretty. This right here, this color is really nice with um, coffee stained and some gold paint. Luscious. <clears throat> Should I put that one down or let's keep it close. I like this one. Let's 
that one there. So this one is going to start down there. <clears throat> I think I'm going to do it something like that. And then I will. Okay. That way we'll have the major part of it um, down. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> Six. Oh boy. How's everything going with you guys? Enjoying your studio time? I tell you, in a way, I think Honestly, truthfully, this is one of the best times. If we had to look at anything positive about the months that we've all been dealing with, with, you know, being locked in and yada, 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 this has got to be the best time to be an artist because at least we really, truly have a passion that's filling our time up in our, you know, we have a community to connect with. And you know how many people these days don't have hobbies or passions and, They've just gotten so conditioned almost to kind of be in front of a television. And now you don't even really want to be in front of the television because it reminds you of everything that doesn't make you happy. So now you're trying to avoid it. And what else do you do? People don't read like they used to. But we as creatives, man, you know, I, uh, I can't get enough done it seems like the more i'm working the more ideas i have and so many of you reach out to me and say the same thing that thank god for your art and when i hear you guys say it i think to myself i think the same way i think we're so fortunate to have a connection to our creativity to art something that truly not only fills up our our time but we really can get lost in it i know when i'm in my studio doing my work honestly i'm kind of like I'm honestly tuned out from the world. I really don't know what's going on out there. And quite honestly, I'm, I'm opening up another one. I really don't even care. Aside from like the art and my community and what's going on with you guys and everything. So I think we're pretty fortunate to have, you know, something like this that we do and we enjoy doing. I think all creative types, anyone that's that has a passion for the arts, if it's a musician or, you know, a knitter, you sew, you know, you embroider, whatever it is that you're doing with your hands and your mind and you're just being creative, we're a pretty fortunate group. So, I know I've been thinking about that. I know when I was a kid coming up, I think a lot of you can relate to this. Remember how when you filled out applications for anything, there was always a line on there that said, that asked you what your hobby was. Remember that? It always, you always got, I'm telling you, I see these applications now that my kids are filling out and, you know, what have you. It, it doesn't ask you about hobbies anymore. They are not asked what is their hobby. And that really just struck me when, when it, when I realized that, I'm like, wow, you know, this whole concept of hobbies, where did that go? Like, even where did the inspiration from, like, mainstream media or education or whatever, like, when has that just kind of gotten, when did that get taken out of sort of like, you know, the tell me something about yourself category of life. I don't know. It's just amazing to me when it, when it really hit me. I don't know if you guys have noticed that yourselves, but nope. So now we're in times where everybody could stand to have a hobby. I mean, a serious hobby. I'm the kind of person, I'm really the eternal optimist. I'm always looking for... <laughs> right side of something. Oh boy, so when I was thinking about this whole thing, I was like, well at least us artists. <laughs> We're a cool lot. Alrighty. See, I like how this little gold is going to be peeking through there. So we'll see how much of that's going to actually get cut up.
cover it up. Maybe not so much. Okay. Alrighty. Now let's see where Robin's going with all of this. I know you're like, okay, hurry up and get it glued down so I can see what you're doing. Okay, so now that's done I, I have these still have these spots top and bottom but we're going you'll see we're going to come back to that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in oops sorry I'm banging my camera let's take and fold this in half I'm just going to get these edges lined up because these ends may not really be lined up as of yet uh, it should be top and bottom though. So let me get my bone folder. I'm going to get a pretty long one. And uh, let's get that one folded there. And then because this paper is pretty thick, I'm going to go inside of it first and kind of make a line there so that I can get this paper flat and not have it crinkled. Ideally, you let it dry a little bit. See, because I have that little bit of that crinkle in there, which I knew was going to happen, but I can go in here and try to... We'll flatten that out in a minute. You'll see what we're going to do. But let me just go ahead, and the other thing I can do is now that I've got this fold line, I can kind of just do a rough score, and that'll just push it down a bit so that it creates a fold. Let me see, where was that? That fold line. So it just kind of gives it a place to fold into. Okay, good. And then I'll flip it over. And I'm going to score it on the same line. And what this does, it just creates a crease. So this paper, you know, gets locked into the position that we want the fold to be. And we don't get that crazy puckering crease. There. There. Now we're good. All good. Okay. So... I think what I'm going to do now is even up these ends. Where is my, I'll just use my cutting mat. So, I want to make sure that this end is nice and straight. My straight edge, I'm going to just trim a little bit off. This is how once you get Sure, this is even. Hold up. Okay. So once you get your paper together and you want all your edges to be square, you can just lay it down and trim it off. Okay. And let's do the same thing on, okay, so now let's do the same thing on this other side. And this is ripped and everything, but I'm not going to worry about that because I've got a plan. You'll see very shortly. Go ahead and trim this off. Alrighty, so now we have our full length like that. So now what I want to do is we're going to take this and fold it in half. Same as before, and now that we know we basically have right angles, we should be pretty good. So same thing here. Let's just go ahead and 
Okay, so um, you will. We really wouldn't get that puckering if you let it dry. So if you uh, flip it this way. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and if you are working through and you just want to kind of keep on working, then just know that you kind of have to do what I'm doing, which is getting those folds in place. And then I'm just putting a straight edge and I'm running a straight edge right where I want these folds to be. So basically what I'm doing is I'm really just making sure that I'm locking the fold in by um, creating a groove or a score, call it a score mark as well. Okay. So now I'll fold it back this way and that should help to lock. Yep, lock it in, good. I know I'm flipping back and forth, but I gotta do this until you get this, wanna get it right. So now we're opening it back up and we're gonna go the long way, like that. We have our folds there and we're gonna do it one more time. So we're gonna fold down, make sure I'm in camera. It's kinda hard for me to, oh, wait a minute. Excuse me, let me just make sure I'm out as far as I need to be. Okay, that should help. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this over one more time. This. I even like how we have these, these spots left there throughout it. That's actually kind of nice. Oh boy, it's probably gonna be evening maneuvers. Let me just close the window. tell you I live near an Air Force base several times a day they are out there with those maneuvers you know what when we see it okay how much we're almost to the point so what we did is we took a piece that's this size you know, our full length which is about what 22 23 and then we simply just made it even by folding it in half and folding it one more time. So this becomes the size of our book. I really like, this is a nice size that we're working with here. So, okay, I'm just kind of still fooling with this because I feel like I'm off camera. But the edges here, I'm sorry, I might not have set this up like I should have because I've been doing a lot of different recording. Okay, that's better. Because this is the edge of my desk here. So I gotta, I use that as my barometer, okay. So now what we're going to do is open this up and we are going to, I need to stand up. So we're going to cut this from this edge. That's why I didn't do anything here over to the spot where our last folded line is, which is right there. So I'm going to start working from that edge out. So I'm going to use my, I do have a cutting mat, mat. No, I don't. Oops, I'm glad I looked. I was going to say, I do have a cutting mat underneath there, but I don't. All right, cut through my desk. I have that piece of paper, so let's just put this up here. Okay, so starting at that edge to here. Okay, so we're going to shift this just a little bit. As I showed you, the, my original plan was to cut it down like we did and then fold it into a book that would pretty much operate like this, which is a really cool structure. The only problem with that is that you see some of the back, but you miss a whole section like that because this is designed to actually glue together. So I didn't want to do that. And then have this whole internal section. Well, it's just, but you know, I didn't want that lost. So we're going to change it just a slight bit. You could still do that with something else, or if you wanted to make one like that where you didn't, um, you know, cut it all the way like we're going to do, you could keep it in that sort of 
I'll fold but in the meantime we're just going to go ahead and finish cutting this through so like that so we have two separate pieces now what we're going to do is take those two pieces and we're going to join them <clears throat> Well, now I got the option to see how I want to put them together. I might flip them because this actually, I like the transition from warm. So I'll flip them and then we're going to put them together like this. So what I like to do is I like to make my own washi tape out of whatever print I'm using. So actually I took and I, let me move this up so you can see it. I photocopied on some of the calligraphy paper, the sort of what you call a um, Kozo or what's commonly known as a rice paper. There's links below the video for this paper. I get on Amazon. You can get like a hundred sheets in a pack for like about seven dollars. And then I just kind of it's it's longer. It's about like this. So I cut it down and run it through my copier. It goes through just fine without any sticking. So I picked a color that I felt like went across all the palettes. It's warm and cool. And and especially since I'm going to be using it right here to create my hinge. And the way I do that is we need to go the long way. I like this thin rice paper because to me it just makes a good move this up some washi style paper, but yet it's still very durable. So I take my double-sided tape, um, score tape. Um, oftentimes people, you guys, you know, folks know it as score tape. Or this is a double-sided tape that I get at, um, <clears throat> at my local. Oh, I got that down wrong. I can just flatten it. At my local Asian stationery store. And, um, but it's just a double-sided tape wherever you can find a very thin, you know, it's a thin backed tape. So lay that down. We'll clip it there. Clip it here. Get that piece off because it's pretty sticky. Okay. And I'm going to do a second one because I'm going to do this on both sides. So do like that. Alrighty. So that pretty much gives us our tape. And I like to use my bone folder to really just get a good adhesion but it's going to be fine because this the paper is thin and the tape is super aggressive so then I just put my ruler right next to it and just run it down and um, cut it off of the, the strip <laughs> could be a little slippery because uh it's right on top of this tape but so here's one piece of washi. See, it's gonna go down nice. So let's cut this other one real quick for the other side. I make a lot of my washi like this. I just think it's easy. Um, it matches your work. I take a lot of my jelly prints. This is the best to do with your jelly prints because then it matches, you know, what you have going. Whenever you want to use a uh, um, you know something that you would normally use a washi tape for make your own and then use it just cut this off it's a little thin there okay perfect 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 all right so let's get going with this so this one so we just want to line it up nicely. Okay. 
And then I start off by just peeling it back just a bit. And then laying it down. I like to get it a little bit over the top there. I'd rather trim it and then be able to control it going down as I do have it going down a little crooked. But I can sort of make it rectify that a little bit. But I can keep it, ah, take it all the way off because it is definitely, I know what I'll do. So we'll rip it. No need to keep on going with it going crooked. And then just go over it. Since we have that rough edge, we can just get it straight. And it'll all blend in. There we go. <clears throat> Probably was a good idea to do it like that anyhow. Because it sort of breaks it up so it doesn't look like one strip of tape. Okay. And then we still... Um, then by it being paper, it's, it's available for us to, you know, collage over top of. So we won't have that break just hanging out there. So you'll see. You shall see. So let's just go ahead and get this other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, it's going to be a little harder for me to, get it started here but I'm going to go ahead and tear it in sections because I like that actually <laughs> so I might as well do it on this side too there so it's like collaging with our <clears throat> with our washi tape why not Get this started. It's always a little tricky when you tear it because you got to find starting point, but it's worth it in the end. There. Here we are. Oh, I like that. Perfect. Our last piece is going to be easier because it's at the end edge here. Okay. And there. Perfect. All right. So then we can use our bone folder again. Get this stuff out the way. Make sure I'm in frame. Getting used to all the new stuff. Okay, so we'll just fold this back. And that's good. So this right here, I noticed that this strip didn't seem to have glue all the way to the end of it. So you know how we solve that. Um, I don't mind the irregular edge anyway. Because... Um, my how is it that my glue brush doesn't have any water in it I normally always have water in it okay let me see do I have a little bit of water somewhere <laughs> I'll just put it on my paintbrush okay so this edge I'll show you see where this edge didn't have um um, it wasn't adhesive right there. I sort of noticed that. So that's okay. See how this is all no problem. We don't want that sticking up. And actually I'd rather take and get, <clears throat> just pull it off, sort of get this irregular edge, then gluing it down. Just adds to, you know, the way we like to work. Okay, I'll do the same thing. Just a little bit of water is needed. So anywhere that is sticking up like that, you can do that. 
with it. Okay, and that just allows it to sort of not be so regular too, which I like that. Okay, so. All right, so now what we're going to do is, let's go back. Hope you guys are keeping up with me. I know <clears throat> it's a lot of back and forth because it's such a large piece as well. But now we can see. So if this is our front, then it's going to open like this, like that, like that, like that. This will be the back cover. And then, so my X is going to turn around. So I'm going to actually have that as the inside. This will be the back. Since I flipped it, this is going to now be our back. I'll know that. And this I'll get rid of. We're going to glue stuff down there anyway. Okay, so let's find some of our extra papers so we can sort of finish it off. So I think I can take, glue some of this in here. <clears throat> and I want to figure where I'm going to put this. So that's going to be a cover, cover. See how it really starts having this really photo journal look to it. So I think I'm going to take this and kind of just kind of line it up in there. Let me get some glue paper and we'll just kind of finish this off by putting some more pieces down and then next week we'll do the covers and some ink blot jelly printing. I happen to like ink blots, but I'll show you that. But you know, of course, you could just use your stencils. Um, we may even use some stencils. We'll see. And some ink blot. We'll see. But just to put some sort of a distinctive surface on there. So let's go ahead and put this down. Flip it so I can see it. I'm going to leave that there, but let me cover it up with something because that's going to actually be where I'm going to put the fabric down, but it's nice to have that piece go all the way up. So let me just take and tear a piece, cover that glue up. Perfect. So I'll just put this right on top of this right here. Since I have that piece there, I don't want it to be sticky. And that'll also just reinforce this area where there was a rip. Okay. So that's good. And I might use some of this paper that I used for the um, washi tape. Now let's see what I want the front of my book to be. That's going to be kind of important. Okay. Here we have some of this. We'll put this there. Okay. So now we're just going to fill in some of the places <clears throat> that we want to see filled in. But I'm not going to fill in all of it because I like some of these coffee stain spots. So we'll... And then I might actually... Oh, I know what I'll do too. When we go to jelly print, I'll use some of the gold paint. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. 
I'll put some of the golden iridescent bronze in certain places. That'll look nice. So just put this here so it overlaps a little bit. Well, get a decent overlap. Why not? Okay. See, that looks good. These papers all work well together because, you know, it's all walls. That, but I didn't actually take all of these in the same spot. That's interesting. Um, but some of them were from the same spot. But, you know, just the colors of the region kind of were everywhere. Oh, that looks good. So I'm going to leave this down here until we get to painting. And then with some of the ink blots that I'm going to do, it'll pick up nicely. But I want to put... So this is the front of my book. And then we still have the back, you know. That's what's nice about this. You have a couple of sides to deal with. Okay, so I do want to get this in here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So I think what I'm going to do... I know I'm covering some of that up, but I don't mind the layering, but I definitely want this on there. Get some. So, let's put this down. Myself another blue sheet here. <laughs> so, yeah, and then it's like pulling out some of the papers that you want to feature. The fact this this paper has like this uh, this particular wall had that little window in it and then I overlaid some of my scripting from you know into the printables. I just thought that it just gave a nice composition. And I think it you know it starts telling a story here with where we have this wall going. Put that up a little higher so that get a little bit more of that scripting on there. Oh, I love it. Love it. So these are the September printables. Oh, I just, I love that. So it gives that little extra, you know, like, it really looks like a photo journal. That's what I was going for with this whole look. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this. The top. Okay, and we have... <clears throat> let's look. This is the front. So I'm going to go ahead and put front on it. I do, since we're going to be covering this up too, just put front back. And then that way, when you're working, you can kind of keep your orientation together as well. Okay, so there we have it. I do want to put a little something down in here. So I think I'll flip it and add this piece. Well, I do need to put something here because this is the inside. Maybe I'll do it like that. And leave this open because I got some of the gold spray paint there. And I think what I'm going to do here is just... <clears throat> Let's do this. I'm going to put something in this area. So that's the thing I like about working on paper that's already got stuff on it. Even like the paper that you may have down on your table when you're printing, your jelly printing and stuff like that. You know how it gets all those really cool marks and stuff on it? <laughs> That's good stuff to use as a foundation paper. Because then you get like all these little, you know, spots and stains and paint and stuff that you can work around and decide, yeah, you want to keep that. 
and I use that paper a lot for the different um, journals like this that I like to make. So we're going to flip it, kind of do it like this. And um, since this is thin, I'm just going to bring it right up over on this side. Because most of that's going to be the front piece that's going to get covered. So, yeah. See how cool that looks just kind of laying up against the gold and the staining. So. Let me just trim. Oh, that's good. So let's go ahead and put this down right here. I'm, I like that there. And that's our inside cover. And then I think we're going to stop there because that leaves enough you know, empty spaces to decide what I want to do when I get um, the paint and the jelly jelly plate next week. I got some ideas. I think I might use my stencils are going to be released really soon. So I'm excited about that. So I think I'll work with them so you guys can get start getting some ideas. Okay, let's go ahead and put this down right there. Here we are. Yes, I like it. Let's go ahead and cut this. So, you know, you can get to a similar point. If you're working with this month or you have other months that you want that you really like and you, you know you can do a similar thing or your own jelly prints or a combination of your jelly prints with the printables and you know how we do it we mix it up okay so let's look at this again so that's our front let's flip it uh, trim this here Okay. Alrighty. So, front. Really love how we have this interplay of the gold spray paint on the coffee stained paper. And then what's nice is you, you can actually overlay words on here. You could actually turn this into a junk journal if you wanted to by putting pockets in it. Um, I have some ideas where I'm going to do some, I'm going to do an overlay. I'll show you that next week. Oh, I love it. I love that there like that. This is good. Yep. And then that'll be <clears throat> the back, but we'd flip it over. And we have this going on. Yeah, this will take the ink blots nicely. Yeah, so we're going to leave that space. I'm loving this, just like this. Okay, and then we're back to the front. So that's how the book opens, and that's how it works. So we've gotten that part done. Yay! <laughs> so get to that point, and the next week we'll finish it up. And uh, this is just another way that you can work with your... your, your um, your, you know, your jelly prints or any kind of printables. And with this, this wonderful coffee stain waste paper. And, you know, you can just get paper, honestly, and just coffee stain it <laughs> so you can work with it. You know, it doesn't have to be stuff that was on your desk. If you need to make some yourself, just get some and, um, and do it like that. Alrighty. Well, listen, thanks a lot for hanging out again with me on Saturday here. And I hope you're enjoying the this project. We went... I think it was 20 something weeks to make one book and we'll be two weeks and we'll get another structure, a fun way of working knocked out. And what's nice about these is that this style can even be slipped in to a larger book if you want to kind of do a book in a book. I mean, there's a lot of options that could happen with these. So that's everything. 
I will be updating you next week on the giveaway. So remember about that. Um, I guess that's everything. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. And um, remember, if you like the video, please thumbs it up. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Lots of more project coming like this. And yeah, I guess that's everything. All right, guys, take care. <laughs> Love you so much. Bye-bye.